Hey, what is up everyone? So, one week ago, we ran a stock trading experiment where we used the LSTM model from Neural Networks in order to buy and sell stocks on every day of the week from Monday through Friday, investing $200 each time so that altogether, we invested $1,000. And I am super excited to say, we actually beat the market. Kind of. To understand what that kind of means, let's dive into the results from this experiment. So as we dive through the results for each day from Monday through Friday, we're going to be comparing the results from the LSTM experiment we just ran to a couple of other experiments. One will be the last video we did before this, which was using the ARMA, the autoregressive moving average model, which is also a model that takes into account information from previous days. But as we said, it's not as theoretically powerful and able to take into account these longer term dependencies, which is why we tried the LSTM model instead. But we should check. If we had used the ARMA model, would we have made less money, more money, about the same amount of money? And the other strategy we'll be comparing against is what we'll call a baseline strategy, which would be every day of the week, you buy the S&P 500 in the beginning of the day, investing $200 again, and then you sell those stocks at the end of the day. And then we also see how that did compared to the LSTM experiment and the ARMA experiment. So let's get into Monday. So on Monday, we see the ARMA model comes out swinging. We get a massive 2.23% return from the ARMA model on Monday. Now the LSTM model is also giving us a positive return, but it's smaller, it's 0.5%. But the good news is both of our models have demolished the market model for today. If we had bought and sold the S&P 500 today, we actually would have lost 0.7%. Getting into Tuesday, we see that the LSTM and ARMA models do very similarly. The ARMA model gives you a 0.27% return, and the LSTM model gives you just a little bit more at 0.3%. And again, good news, we see both of them are beating the market model today, which would have given us 0.1% return. Now on Wednesday, the story gets really interesting. The ARMA model has a modest return of 0.18% on Wednesday. The LSTM model, on the other hand, gives you a loss. The LSTM model today gave us a negative 0.7% return. That's a pretty big gap between the ARMA and LSTM. But the story just keeps getting interesting when we look at the market model, which would have given us almost a whole percent return. It gave us 0.9% return. So the market model totally demolishes both of these other two. But as we said, if we had to pick between these two, it would definitely be the ARMA model, which gave us a positive return versus the LSTM giving us a negative return. Going into Thursday, we see that ARMA dominance again. The ARMA model gives you almost a 0.6% return on Thursday, with the LSTM model being positive, but just a modest 0.1%. But the great news is they both demolish the market again. The market would have given us negative 1% today if we had bought and sold it. And finally, getting into Friday, the last day of the experiment. We see this is a day where the LSTM model actually shines. It gives you a 0.7% return. The ARMA model also does pretty good, gives you a 0.45% return. And again, they are both destroying the market, which was more or less flat, just a 0.08% return. So now we've looked at it day by day by day, but what we really want to know is looking at the total amount of money we invested in each of these three strategies and looking at how much money we made altogether over five days for each of these three strategies, what is the percent return for each of these three experiments? Drum roll, please. So we see that the ARMA model won by a landslide. Overall, the ARMA model gave us a 0.65% return, but crucially, the LSTA model also gave us a positive return through this experiment. It was 0.2% total. And the most exciting news, I think, even if it is kind of weird that this really powerful neural network lost to a much simpler ARMA model, we'll talk about all that in just a second. But let's celebrate the fact for a second that both of these, including the LSTM model, beat the market. And in this case, the market model actually would have given us a negative 0.123% return. So we were able to just buy a bit for the LSTM model and by a much bigger margin for the ARMA model, beat the market in this video. Now, before diving into the differences between ARMA and the LSTM model, let's go back to the comment I made in the beginning of this video where I said, we beat the market, kind of. If it feels weird to you, why are we buying and selling the S&P 500 every single day? Isn't that a index that you're supposed to just buy and hold for long periods of time? You're absolutely correct. It's really weird to do this buying and selling daily day trading. The S&P 500 is not something people typically do. We did use that as our baseline because we were also day trading in the other variants of this experiment. But if we did something more reasonable, like just bought 
$1,000 worth of S&P 500 on Monday morning and then sold all that stock on Friday afternoon when the market closed, then we actually definitely did not beat the market. Because if that was your experiment, and that's much simpler, right? Just one buy of $1,000 in the beginning and then you sell it at the very end, nowhere near as complicated as any of those experiments we were talking about today, then that actually gives you a positive 1.44% return, which makes that positive 0.65% return, even from the ARMA model, look like, well, why would you even run that? Why wouldn't you just go with the simplest model? So did we beat the market? Yes, if we're considering the day trading market strategy, but you know, that's got all this weird stuff about it. Who does that? We definitely did not beat the market if we're just talking about a buy in the beginning of Monday and the sell at the end of Friday. So we still got to get that pure win over the market in one of these videos. But let's take the time we have left in this video and chat a little bit about the difference between ARMA model and the LSTM model. Because at least theoretically and on paper, and the motivation for doing the LSTM experiment at all was that, well, ARMA is just supposed to be a weaker model. It's not supposed to be able to take into account longer term dependencies. It's not supposed to naturally take in embeddings instead of just single features. So it has all these problems. And so why wouldn't the LSTM model necessarily do better? Well, there's two, there's two reasons that it might have happened. And the first one is our good friend overfitting. As you probably learned in your data science journey a couple times already, a more complicated model is not always necessarily a better model. A more complex model does usually have the ability to take into account more intricate dependencies and dynamics in your data. But it also comes with the drawbacks that it can learn things that aren't really there from the training data if you don't properly do cross-validation and backtesting. As we said in the video one week ago, we didn't do proper, proper backtesting for our LSTM model because of the computational complexity involved. So it's possible that by actually doing proper, proper backtesting for the LSTM model, we would have found that actually it's not doing so great on these validation sets. Maybe there was other ticker symbols that maybe had lower predicted probabilities of the next day's return being positive, but which were more consistent, more accurate in terms of that probability actually being true. So reason number one for why we saw this somewhat unexpected reversal of ARMA actually beating the LSTM model could be that the LSTM model actually would have done better if we had done a better job of being diligent, of being responsible with taking this really complicated model and making sure to do proper cross-validation and back-testing and all these techniques on it. So that's something we'll keep in mind as we use more and more complex models. We can't get away with just hand-waving and saying, you know what, it'll be fine. Now, the other reason for this reversal, and I think more of the reason, is actually the strategy we chose surrounding these two models. As you've noticed in this stock trading series, we're not simply just swapping out ARMA for LSTM, for transformers, for different models. We're making other changes to the strategy as well around how do you decide how much of your $200 a day to invest in each of these five stocks. Is it just equal amounts all across the board or do you use some kind of proportional investing? We make even bigger changes like in the ARMA video, we were actually using ARMA to predict what the return will be for a stock tomorrow. In the LSTM video, we treated it more as a classification problem, just saying, what's the probability that tomorrow's return will be positive? Not how positive or how negative is it gonna be, but just will it be positive? And with those specific choices surrounding the core model we choose to use in any given video, come pros and cons that we have to talk about. And the biggest pro and con, I think, that reared its head when we're looking at this reversal between ARMA and LSTM in this video was that in the ARMA video, we were a lot more conservative. We required a lot more evidence that a stock is actually going to perform as good as it looks like it's going to perform on paper. On the LSTM video, we were more just like, yeah, you know what, looks good enough, let's invest some money in it. For the ARMA model, we allowed a maximum of three stocks, the three best stocks through our filter. And if less than three stocks got past our filter, we weren't gonna go hunting for a third stock just because, we were just gonna accept that, you know what? These are quality, we're just going to take this $33.33 and invest it in both of these. And we're not gonna worry about having to invest our $100 every single day. In the LSTM model, we didn't have as many strong constraints. We were a lot more liberal in which stocks got included. The only condition that we enforced was that if you train an LSTM model using this stock, it shows some improvement historically, but we didn't put a lower bound on how big that threshold has to be. It just needs to be greater than zero. And so it's possible that by being more liberal and not caring as much about the strict filters it takes for a stock to enter this experiment, we actually ended up shooting ourselves in the foot because we included stocks who maybe showed a little bit of improvement over the baseline, but not enough to be any level of confident that they're gonna do good in the real world. And we can actually get some evidence of that by showing this plot where each point 
is one ticker symbol that we bought on some day of the LSTM experiment. The x-axis is the model's predicted probability that the next day's return would be positive. And the y-axis is the actual return that we got from that stock. We chop it up into three regions of predicted probability, a low region, a medium region, and a high region. And you see that for the low region, our model gave between about a 60 and 65% chance that the next day's return would be positive. But what fraction actually was positive? Only 29%. There's not that many data points here, but it really seems bad when your model is saying that, you know, there's like a 65% chance that the next day's return will be positive and it comes out after the experiment to only about 30%. If you look at the medium region, it's even worse. In this region, we're saying it's like a 65 to 70% chance the next day's return is positive, and you actually get the exact same around 30% probability was actually positive. So we probably, redefinitely, could have benefited from a much stricter threshold on this predicted probability the next day's return was positive, and also a much stricter threshold on how much better than the baseline validation accuracy did we do. And you can see that by looking at the green region here, where the predicted probability was between 70 and 90%. And if we ask the same question, what fraction of those points actually gave us a positive return, then the answer there is a whopping 71%. So if we had just set our threshold to be only included if it's in that green region, above about 70% predicted probability of next day's return being positive, we probably would have done a lot better and possibly even beat the ARMA model using the LSTM model. So I hope you enjoyed this video, a bit of a mixed bag here. We did beat the market in some sense if we were talking about this day trading market strategy. We're probably in a more correct sense for how people actually trade the S&P 500. We did not beat the market in this video. That is still a bar that we need to hit, hopefully in the next video. So thank you all so much for following this series. It's a lot of fun for me and I hope it is fun for you too. If you have any suggestions or questions or comments on this strategy or ideas for future strategies, please put them in the comments section below. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you later.